I was, I was told I had to leave some of my clothes on. <laughs> So I have, uh, I have two poems that I'm going to be reading, and then uh, I have another spoken word piece. Um, and I'm going to bring it down for, for the two poems, and then try to uh, bring it back up. This first poem is called Pigeons in a Field. If one had fallen like lead from a pencil pressed one too many times, fallen from lead pressed through it from pressure produced by explosion driving lead through a pipe, the scene would have changed from a field covered in snow, like a bed by a sheet, a field unmarred by footsteps or a past of any kind, except for birds clustered, before they rose tangential and riotous for the sky, or perhaps stiff, but still rising as one, their cries awakening wonder, a silence ruined and painted raw. But not broken, only alive like sunlight with colors as possibilities. Wonder rising skyward, the sound jarring and liminal, the wings clapped, each one a knock to remember, the moment each wing chanced. All the birds dispersed together, silence returning to the land, untouched by punctuation or a fall. But inside me one crashed, a mirror breaking, so that seven years turned the snow red and the quiet never returned. Um, so this last year has been pretty hard for me because um, I uh, I got divorced and and that was that was awful. Uh, but I was interested in basically the, the experience of pain that emotional pain is uh, can mimic physical pain, and so I was trying to deal with that uh, in this poem from seven to ten. Ten bullets had torn through him, two turning his right lung to pulp several weeks before. Now he grimaces from discomfort from a tube draining fluid from his chest. On a scale of one to ten, he says, this is a seven. Not much farther up to go from seven to ten, that is. Pain separates itself from sensation such that he has forgotten the feeling of the ten bullets spiderwebbing his bones. I say, I'm really feeling better. My life coming into focus after the death of what I had called love, which she crippled like a child tripping a landmine. Then I hear the song she once told me she wished I wouldn't listen to so she wouldn't have to share every fucking thing with me. And I, unscathed by bullets but broken into more pieces than his femur was when two chunks of lead slammed into it like trains into a school bus, I turned on a song a friend who wanted me to heal helped me to make my own, and I felt, I feel the ten tear out my heart like a weed. The ten that he felt and forgotten, because it's all in our heads. Our bodies protecting by forgetting. But I let the ten reside, just so, so I will never forget. So this next piece is um, a piece that's, that's uh, a little bit older, um, and it's called Colors. There was a time when the silver screen told tales as truth. When our fixation taught us to believe that life was as black and white as the screen. But now we return, those silver screens search us like sleuths and we're stunned by the dual vision of what we've seen. For black is white in color as white is black light. Back in the real world, my vision is still speckled with the black and white of absoluteness while the air is freckled and illusory colors disperse. Pink is gone. Blue has left black and gray fade into and out of existence. White now reigns. White ceilings, white pipes, white paint, white skin, white traffic street readings, muted white and untouchable, meaning nothing, blankly. Standing entrenched in whiteness, in colorlessness, perhaps in colorfulness, but no one understands it except for those who understand themselves. Then a gray door, 
a black speaker, colors coming back to me as if in a black and white movie with an attempt at color by numbers with a number two pencil. Looking out a window, I see my first glimpse of gold sparkling off a streetlight. Taking a step back, I remember streetlights of the past, always silver, not so worthy as the gold that now diligently winks at me. Perhaps my life is now worth more than it was when I stood stolidly staring at that smoke stained silver. But does it matter? Doesn't matter if the street lights are gold or silver, whether my skin sparkles in moonlight or application sun, whether my skin burns. Sooner or later, we're all going to burn, all going to die, all look back and realize we're only human, only people seeing colors to color our imagination, seeing earth and all its glory manifested in the truth that can be seen but never held down by what we say is color, but it's really only life. And that is the truth you can see in the illuminated silver lit by an attempt at brilliant black and pitch white, only set to spite the real colors in life. So I put forward the challenge of holding those colors. Those colors you see every day of your life, and in those colors you'll see that black and white is the retroflexing truth of hope that may well remind you what you never want to know. And in that moment of color fervor, you'll see for one second and know that you can never be here forever. And what you need to do is take a step back and then try it again to get the colors right. Thank you.